The faithful will be rewarded for their faithfulness in waiting, whereas the ones that got frustrated and just drove off, we hope they will come back to our next hike for wellness. In spite of all the negative things that have occurred and a very, very late start, we still hope, hope to entertain everybody. We're going to go and look at the gun, which is a phenomenal experience. There's the cowling, uh, that metal thing there that, that had a little engine that used to drive the hydraulics to actually lift it up. And the McGill University advanced in the first $200,000 to actually start the project. So it actually started in McGill University in Canada and they only picked this Barbados location because of the fact that it was really close to the equator. They wanted an equation that was close to the equator. And this was the only Caribbean government, uh, island where the government agreed to let him come and do his stuff. In exchange for doing his stuff and giving him this area, which he secured with his own private security guards, the, he, um, he supplied a, a radar system to the um, what was then the Sewell Airport so that you can see the uh, rammer cartridge uh, trolley that used to load the gun. The rammer cartridge probably used to load the sabot into the gun from behind here and you can still get through. Okay, we'll see that. Yeah, you can still get through. So we'll bring you here and show you. There's nobody here following. <laughs> no. As you can see, it goes right back into the hillside there. Mm -hmm. And uh, this doubles as uh, um, it, it, it comes down here, the trolley comes down here and forces it into the breach. And then, they, then they, after that is done, then they load the space behind it with the um, bikes of charge. So they use um, standard M8, M8M propellant. That's what they, was their favorite propellant. Mm -hmm. And they sew some black powder into the bike so that it, it instantly um, is easy to ignite. Mm -hmm. And uh, what he did over the course of the years, which he documented in the literature, is he, he, uh, he experimented with uh, multiple point ignition um, rods that you see on the outside here the extra lengthening of the barrel here occurred that all this extra metal that you see on the outside is to stiffen it because the initial weld was where it broke so to get it to 119 feet they had to do that but what happens is when they try to raise it now to fire it, the sheer weight of the of the mass of the thing itself uh, sort of it has bending and flexing, so they need to tighten these um, bolts along here to get it back to be 100% true. So it was quite a, a quite a feat to have to deal with these um, stiffening rods. You see, there's gigantic nuts right there that they can turn. With a big spanner. So, what were the other cannons above? What are the, what are they? Oh, those were just small experimental ones. Oh. But this was the main thing that he was using. Yeah, he was. He would he would test some of his ideas with the small ones, like the things about uh, about the multi-point charges and all of that. Because he was he, he was. What's the name of your boss again that I used to work with? Like, <laughs> who? Your boss that I used to work with here. What is his What is his name? Bo. <laughs> <laughs> well, no comment on that. So just test it small and then make it big. Yes, that's true. And um, he was, as I said, he was experimenting with the trying to increase the muzzle velocity by by using these multi-point charges. Mm -hmm. So some of these ideas he would test out and then scale up to this big gun mm -hmm. because it was obviously more expensive to fire this big gun than it was to fire the small ones. Of course. And the thing about it was that um, he was trying to. In fact, the whole reason that attracted the investors in the first place to the entire project was the fact that a single shot through this um, gathered more data and was much cheaper than using the rockets that NASA was using to try and do the same task. Mm -hmm. So um, the idea of, of uh, firing it out of a gun had an economic advantage to it. So even though it was expensive, it was actually cheaper. Each yeah. time he fired it, he was gaining data. There are in fact five little holes, which I don't know if we could even find out, where he had installed some sensors that were, were able to measure the 
measure the velocity as it came up. As the projectile passed each point, it would trigger a circuit. And uh, that would then give him a time difference, a very small time difference, which the electronics was recording between the time it passed that point and that point. So he was able to do calculations to find out the again? speed. Who? What's his name? Gerald, Gerald Bull. Gerald, Gerald Bull. Yeah. Video to put in the actual. Everybody can get down there. Yeah. Okay, well, we had an adventurous daredevil who went down into Salt Cave and he's saying everybody can get down there. Oh, look, he brought back some salt. Make sure you record it carefully. This has got to be part of the video, right? We're going to put that on the YouTube, the Facebook entertainment so that people can say what it's like when we go on these exciting hikes. Well, I don't have anything to put. Oh, yes, wait, I do have something to put it in. Hold on a sec. We do have something to put it in. We always try. Yeah, hold on a second. But we always travel with. Uh, we always travel with these Ziploc bags. Make sure you support uh, Ziploc. They're a really great company. And, um, yes, here you go. Actually, it's Diamond. Oh dear, it's a no-name brand. But I love no-name brand. Huh? It's, it's cheap. Okay, so put it in here now so that we have it. There you go. You got the whole thing. So thanks very much. Uh, this has excited us today. We can do some scientific studies now on that. Maybe we can use it in the next explosive or something. Yeah, come to Barbados. Come to Barbados and experience the salt cave. Experience a hike for your wellness. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, if you would like them shortened or is it on a good length or what? I think basically it's a good length. It's a good length? Yeah. yeah. Um, for me as a first timer, uh, coming up from down by Paragon, that, that little bit of climb took a little bit over me. Oh. You mean like when we were climbing up the hill there to that, get back onto the uh, to the road? I, if I can make the comment to my to a colleague, it was like putting the treadmill at, um, <laughs> at grade 15. Oh, <laughs> oh okay, okay, okay. We definitely did well. <laughs> but we have to be very careful to keep the hike so that first-time hikers have a pleasant experience. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, and uh, today, although it was relatively flat compared to some of our other hikes, <laughs> um, you know, it was also slightly longer in terms of distance. Uh, in order to get an interesting um, hike there because we, we wanted to offset that road walk with, with a, a reasonable amount of, uh, of cliffside. What I, what I thought was particularly interesting to me was the, the scenery, the variety, the, the harp gun yes, yes. and so on. I thought that was really, really excellent. I, I, when I first heard of it, I thought we were likely to be going through Rock Hall, but we, we just passed by Rock Hall. Oh. Mm, but um, it, it, was, it was interesting. Okay, well, thanks very much, and we do hope that you'll come back again in the future at some point. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing you on the next Hike for Wellness. Remember, get up out of that armchair and join us as we hike for your wellness. Thanks so much. See you on the next hike.